Hey y'all, how y'all doing out there today? I got just real quickie here for you this morning. <laughs> you know, you can't help but wonder. I have once had a brother tell me, take me out as soon as I come up out of the water during my baptism because that's when I'm at my cleanest. And I thought about that and I was like, dang, he, you know, that's a, that's a valid point in my mind at the time. I thought, man, that's a valid point. When you come up out of that water, you're a newborn babe. You are at your cleanest before your God. So what happens to all that sin that you still commit from the time you come out of that water until the time, until the time you either go to sleep in Jesus, die, or uh, we go on to meet him in the air? Because he's coming back here real, real soon. You might as well get that under your... <laughs> You might as well get that under control. He's coming back. Ain't no going to be no stopping. And yes, it could happen in my lifetime. That's for sure. So, what about that sin? What about that sin that happens between baptism and the finishing of your faith? Because Jesus is the author and the finisher of your faith. I mean, is it like once saved, always saved? No, I don't believe it is. There's a lot of people out there to say, yeah, once saved, always saved. Because <laughs> they're just... Uh, I don't know what they're doing, okay? I'm not going to try to judge them because now's not the time for that as far as in this lesson right here. But let me read you some. Here's just a little bit of clue uh, right here where how some of those sins get taken away, okay? Let's look here. I'm over here in 1 Peter chapter 4. I'm going to start reading here in verse 7. It says, But the end of all things is at hand. And I can safely say that in the day in which I live in, the end of all things is truly at hand. Here we go. But the end of all things is at hand. Be you therefore sober and watch unto prayer. So everything we're seeing unfold in the world right now, we're supposed to watch and pray, okay? He says, and above all things, have fervent charity. Charity among yourselves. For charity shall cover a multitude of sins. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. As every man has received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. And if any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God has given. That God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. So you got some sin that's happened to you since you've been baptized? Then you need to be about the works of your Father, right? I had an angel visit me one time, and he spoke to me in an audible voice. I didn't see him, but I heard him. He's standing right beside me. Right about where that sun's coming through that window right there. Not in this dwelling, but that's about where he was standing, that close. And he said these words to me. Do you really want to go out like this, Robert? And he said that to me twice. And both times he said that to me, I've seen every sin that I have been committing. I've seen all the folly. And then he showed me the lake of fire. In vision, of course. And I said, no, Father, I do not want to go out like this. And ever since then, my Father has picked me up, dusted me off. And he's been working with me ever since. I'd say that's about 25 years after my confession of Jesus Christ I went through that so don't think you are inevitable because you are not you can be knocked right off your horse <laughs> so don't be religious over much he said who's going to make it to the kingdom the righteous and the meek a meek righteous man right what's he say right here fervent charity Go look up that word fervent. And then look up that word charity. That don't mean just uh, charitable with your money. That I means charitable with your time, your prayers, your finances, your food, your life, 
that doesn't belong to you anymore because when you went into that water and you came out, you came out married to Jesus. So now just as my wife's life don't matter to her anymore as far as her goals and ambitions, why? Because she joined the ministry. She married the ministry. We both married the ministry. My goals and aspirations in life do not matter to me no more. I'm only about this word. I'm not out trying to be a rock star. I'm not out trying to make it big. I'm not out trying to make millions and millions of dollars anymore. I'm sitting behind this word. And I'm teaching and I'm preaching. I'm trying to have that charitable heart. I'm trying to have that heart of Jesus Christ. The heart of our Father God. And the only way to do that, y'all, is to get in this word every single day. And let Him sanctify you. And don't be those in Isaiah 66 that sanctify themselves. Let the word of the Lord sanctify you and set you apart. And as long as you're fighting to do that, and you're running toward righteousness in this race, he's going to look at you and say, Come in here, good and faithful servant. For I have been preparing a place for you since the foundations of the earth. You all have a good day. Remember, fervent charity, for charity shall cover a multitude of sin. You got some sin in your life? Stop thinking about it. Start thinking about somebody else. Helping them. Being a blessing. Ministering to someone around you. Helping someone. I don't care if it's just a smile or a hello to brighten someone's day. Whatever it is. The little things count too. I love you all. Have a wonderful day in Jesus Christ.